All right, let's continue the discussion now about COVID-19 concerns as we head into the fall. We'd like to bring in Dr. John Brownstein, an epidemiologist at Boston Children's Hospital and also an ABC News medical contributor. Doctor, great to see you. Good to see you too. So we have seen those pictures of crowded classrooms and gatherings on college campuses. Uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci, other health officials have said that infected students should be isolated and not sent home. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think the reality is that schools uh, should be open for in-person learning where it's possible, right? If transmission is kept low, if the schools are prepared with proper ventilation and social distancing and mask wearing, clearly everybody has to do their part. So big, large gatherings of students in colleges is going to lead to flare-ups of outbreaks. And clearly, we also have to focus on testing. Those that are I have been identified as infected need to be isolated and move to remote learning. That's the only way these schools are going to continue to be able to operate into the fall. And even many schools are implementing testing programs to test asymptomatic kids and identify those who are infected, isolate them to, to limit risk to the rest of the school population. All right, well, that leads to my next question. We're getting somewhat conflicting information about who should be tested. Professional athletes are being tested. White House officials are being tested. Uh, that's just a couple of examples. What about students or anyone else who might be asymptomatic but heading back to school or the office? Yeah, this is where the challenge of the new CDC guidelines has created a lot of confusion, right? These new guidelines have said that those who are asymptomatic don't need to get tested. And that really flies in the face of what experts have been saying all along. I mean, we say that testing is going to be the backbone to getting out of this pandemic. And being able to test those who are asymptomatic is so critical because you can identify people that potentially are transmitting the virus and don't even realize it. So broad scale testing programs for everyone, not just those in professional sports or the White House, it are is really the way that we're going to be able to successfully open up schools and offices into the fall. So are you hopeful that we'll see things turn around by the winter? And are there any reasons to be concerned about this potential vaccine? Yeah, I mean, this new CDC guidance is the latest sign of a really accelerating vaccine development pace. And on one hand, it's exciting to see this progress, but it's also quite, uh, you know, ambitious, right? The distribution of millions of vaccines that need to be stored at sub-zero temperatures provided to high-risk groups. I mean, that's a really tall order. And on top of that, we need to be careful about rushing this vaccine. We need as much data from phase three as possible to understand any safety signals. Any issues with this vaccine is going to undermine public trust. And that is something that we can't gain back. So we have to be incredibly careful. That's on top of the challenges of maintaining cold chain and issues of, uh, of administering multiple doses. I mean, these are some serious logistics challenges that we're going to have to deal with uh, very soon. The World Health Organization um, has just recommended the use of this low cost steroid to treat patients with severe COVID-19 cases. What do you think about that? Yeah, so the WHO has published this new guidance for clinicians and healthcare providers on the use of corticosteroids in patients. And this is really exciting. This is an international clinical trial that was published today that shows that cheap, widely available steroids can help with the seriously ill uh, survive COVID-19. Um, and so what's exciting is this is really proving out that steroids can be an important first line of defense. But it's also important to note this is for the severely ill. This is not about treating those with mild illness. So, you know, for the, those with mild illness, we're still in search of the right types of treatments. Got it. Well, Dr. Brownstein, finally, uh, there's been debate about this CDC report finding that 94% of people who have died from COVID actually had an underlying condition. Is that a bit misleading? do you think? Put it into perspective for us. How many Americans have these kind of underlying conditions? And if we think we are healthy, should, be, should we be less concerned about getting infected? Yeah, well, this CDC report is being widely misinterpreted. You know, it looked at death certificates and noted that only 6% of the death certificates around COVID had COVID only as a cause of death, about 9,000 people. But that's really being misinterpreted in two ways. One, that's saying that only 6% of the people that uh, were identified as COVID had uh, were involved in death due to COVID. And number two, that those had pre-existing conditions so that those that don't have pre-existing conditions aren't at risk. And both of these interpretations are not correct. First of all, it's very unlikely to see a death certificate with more than one cause of, uh, without more than one cause of death. 
all death certificates have generally multiple causes. So it's rare to see just a single cause. And number two, we know that the underlying conditions are really such a driver of high uh, risk outcomes around COVID. But let's remember, 45% of Americans have underlying conditions, and many people don't even realize they have underlying conditions. So to put the risk onto just very small numbers of people makes no sense. We all have to remain vigilant and really be concerned about our own risk and the risk of those around us when it comes to COVID-19. Dr. Brownstein, thanks so much for your insights tonight. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.